Hi there, Chad here for Chibi AI. In this video, I'm going to see if I can get GPT-40 Mini to pass the cookie test. Now, if you don't know what the cookie test is, it is a part of Simple Bench here. It is a question that is on its surface. It seems like it's really complicated, but when you kind of go through it, you can see up here that on Simple Bench, human average, we, we score 92% on this. And when you see this question, let me see if I zoom in here a little bit. When you see this question at first, it's like, whoa, okay, this is a little complicated, but then you realize that the answer is actually very, very simple. So the question is on a table, there are, or there is a blue cookie, yellow cookie, and an orange cookie. Those are also the colors of the hats of three bored girls in the room. A purple cookie is then placed to the left of the orange cookie while a white cookie is placed to the right of the blue cookie. The blue-headed girl eats the blue cookie. The yellow-headed girl eats the yellow cookie and three others. And the orange-headed girl will, and that leaves you for picking from these choices, eat the orange cookie, eat the orange, white, and purple cookies, be unable to eat a cookie, or eat just one or two cookies. Now, if you pay attention to this part, like all of this is essentially there to kind of confuse you, but the blue headed girl eats the blue cookie, the yellow headed girl eats the yellow cookie, but then three others, which are all the rest of them. So there are none left for the orange headed girl to eat. What a rude little yellow headed girl. So back here in Chibi, what I've done is I've set up something <laughs> I'm, a, I'm affectionately calling Chibi Q star. It is a series of steps that I feel like probably to some degree, I mean, probably to a limited degree, um, kind of mimics what I think maybe QSTAR is attempting to really do. And so we'll just go through this really quick. I have the question here just so that we can see it. This is not involved in the prompt or, or in this action sequence or anything itself it's already kind of baked in. So the first step, I've got it in here as a default value. What you will see happen when I run this action is we'll get a pop-up and this question with the answers will already be in it. So well, first step, we're gonna analyze the problem. So we're gonna take, we're gonna tell GPT-40 Mini, let me just go in here and show you the settings. GPT-40 Mini, we're going to tell it to slow down. You know, we do the classic slow down, think carefully step by step. You know, there's, there's some debate on whether that actually does anything anymore with the more modern models, but let's just use it. So it's, it's, it's idea here is it's going to analyze in the, the um, pro using the process here to kind of define the problem, identify some of the key variables and their relationships in that problem and come up with an analysis that it's going to then pass on to the next step. So oh, actually I got a little bit here missing here. So let me just go in here and just kind of refresh my stuff. And there we go. Um, so we got the, um, then we have this problem analysis blueprint here and that's what I was refreshing. So in my blueprints, I've got a problem analysis and all it's really doing is it's telling it how to format the output. So we want these three parts with bolding and all that kind of stuff. It's not really super important there. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna come up with that problem analysis, it's gonna pass it on to what I call the strategic planning step. Now here again, slow down, we're gonna brainstorm three distinct strategies for solving the problem. Now here's where I think this kind of, of course, kind of, you know, um, doesn't really follow the full Q star kind of methodology because it's, it's not really capable of producing, you know, thousands or, or how an infinite number, I suppose. It's probably why it's a star, Q star, um, number of strategies, and then kind of going down those paths for those chains of thoughts that we think is happening with the OpenAI 01 model. But, you know, with a little bit of limitation here, we're, we're just sticking to three distinct strategies and we're giving it the problem analysis. So this is coming from step two. So, so here it's passing it in and this one's gonna come up with some strategies. And then it's gonna pass it on to the next step, which is just going to like take its time and look those over. It's gonna review all three of those strategies. It also has an understanding of the problem space. And then after that, it's going to choose one of the three strategies that it thinks is probably the best one to solve the problem. 
After that, it's going to do a tactical breakdown of that strategy so that it kind of breaks it down into a series of steps. So in this case here, we've got it again where it knows what the problem is and it knows the chosen plan. And then it's going to kick out a list of all the steps that it needs to perform, which in the final one here, it's going to perform those tasks. Now we bring the prompt back in here, which is from step one. So it's actually this question here gets brought back into this. And then we have a tactic, the tactical breakdown here, which is the list of steps it's going to follow. And then hopefully the final answer gets kicked out. And in our case, we hope that the final answer is C. Now I will say right up front that it's, it hasn't been a hundred percent reliable, but it's been do, working pretty well. I suppose now that I'm recording, it's going to take its opportunity to not do it correctly. So I'm just going to kick this thing off. It's going to go through each of these steps. It's not writing anything to the document in any of these steps here. These are all just run prompts. So it's basically running and it's doing its job and just moving it on to the next one until it gets to final answer, where at that point it'll kick the answer out here. And do we get C this time or does it embarrass me on camera? We'll just, there we go. C, unable to eat a cookie. So that's pretty interesting, isn't it? So, um, let's, so let's go into our uh, into here. I've got, this is the active role on this document. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to GPT-40 mini. Fallback model doesn't matter. It's not going to get used. We'll leave this blank. We'll set, we'll, we'll set the controls down to zero temperature and we can just lower the tokens. That doesn't really matter. And what I'm trying to do here is I'm just trying to make sure that the role itself has no instructions. It's going straight directly to GPT-40 mini. And then what I should be able to do here instead of chibi, if I do a slash, what is the answer to the above problem? It's an, it's, this is an inline prompt. It should see this. Oh, correct answer is B, eat the orange. Okay. And it comes with that. So you can see that just straight up the GPT-40 mini model is not really that good at answering the question. The correct answer is B, it says, eat the orange, white, and purple cookies. Uh, and here's its reason. The blue-headed girl eats the blue cookie, yeah? The yellow-headed girl eats the yellow and three others. The orange-headed girl is left with the orange cookie, and since the purple cookie is placed... Yeah, see, it's like it, it doesn't really realize that three others means that the yellow-headed girl ate the purple cookie and the others, the white cookie and such. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's a really good question. Um, I'm glad that I found Simple Bench here for that type of question. It's a really good test, I think, but it also shows that even though the GPT-40 Mini by itself can't really do a very good job reasoning with you know questions like this that have some level of complication, if we design things that give it the ability to do that thinking, such as the, the uh, Chibi Q star action that I've got here, then we can make models like GPT-40 Mini perform similarly. I mean, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that it's going to perform as well as OpenAI 01 model, uh, or even the future one that comes out, probably we're guessing in what, October or something? This is right now, the one that we can play around with is the preview model, right? So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not saying that that's what's going to happen if, if you try and do this with a like a lower model like GPT-40 Mini or something. In fact... Let's just let's just try this again. Let's label this here as uh, GPT-40 Mini. So this is Mini's answer. If we go through here, and let's switch it to what do you what do you think? Let's just try Llama 70. We'll switch all these up to Llama 70 so that Llama 70 is the one that is being used for every step, not just. Uh, what is it? Not just the final one for the answer. And once I get these all switched over, we'll hit save. I think this one, did I get it right? Yep. Okay. All right. So let's see if Llama, this, this would be Llama 3.1, 70 billion. We're going to run this past the problem space to it. And Llama 70B, um, it's a pretty capable model. Uh, somebody in the comments of one of my last videos said that GPT-40 Mini is is like a, 
I guess they said it's like an 8 billion parameter model. Um, I'm not sure if that's been verified anywhere. If it if it's true that GPT-40 Mini is an 8 billion parameter model, it's it, it works really well for an 8 billion parameter model then. Um, try, there we go. So Llama70 got the correct answer. <laughs> it didn't really write anything else in there but, this, but the letter, but that's fine. C is the correct answer. So we're, if you introduce steps that cause the AI to, to think, something that you can kind of easily do here in Chibi because you're able to break the prompt structure down. And um, one of the other really cool things about Chibi is that each and every one of these, we, we call these tasks, so it's a task sequence. These all have the ability to kind of interact with your document through different variables and things like that. Uh, and we have all these different types of tasks that we can use so that your actions can perform multiple different things. Like we got some logic tasks down here so we can check if something is reaches a certain readability score, if it contains some sort of text or characters, if it's empty, all kinds of different stuff. We've got loops and stuff that we can just kind of create these really interesting tools that we call them. Actions kind of become these reusable tools that uh, are very powerful. In this case, I'm using them to showcase experiments on how I stress test some of these models and produce or, or push them to do things that they're not really necessarily designed to do or be capable of um, without some uh, added steps, right? So being able to do this is really cool. And if you consider Chibi, please let me know in the comments down below. I'd also love to hear if you have any ideas for other types of benchmarks that you'd like me to try. And until next time, take care.